sir. The scale of the graph is wrong. Let me see. Year one. Year one is defined as a sequence of zero. Plot function, these uh, print functions. Yeah, sorry, I made this mistake. Year one and year two are not vectors, they are defined at each time step, and therefore. I have to remove the dependence of i, and then I don't need to define ER1 and ER2 here. Or otherwise, uh, I think in this way it's correct, but in order to make it uh, identical to what is uploaded on my website, let me take the other way around. So let me keep uh, the dependence, uh, let me keep year one and year two as vectors, and then it means that here I have to put here the i. I don't think we need to keep them as vectors, but anyway, given that in my website uh, I use this solution, <coughs> let's keep them. So in this way, I think the graph should work. And uh, let me try. Yeah, now it works. So I go back to the code. And basically, let's uh, let's recall what was the mistake. The mistake was that when I computed year one and year two, I computed them as variables and not as vectors. I don't think it is needed that we keep year one and year two in the form of a vector. I think it would suffice to to change to attribute them to a variable and to change them any time step. Because the, the sum to form up here is computed at each time step. So we don't need really a vector for year one and year two. But of course, uh, this is anyway a possibility. And uh, if you look at the output, the output is reasonable. Of course, I just put trial values for parameters, but I'm not interested in seeing you now the magnitude of the result. I'm just interested in seeing that uh, it runs. And it is reasonable because what you see here is basically something that is clearly related to rain. For when it rains, you have peaks in the run of production. When it doesn't rain, you have zeros, which is fine. Of course, there is uh, not yet routing, whatever, but it seems that it is working. And in order to see if it's also working in a quantitative way, because this is a qualitative test, like runs, doesn't run. In order to be able to say that it runs well, we need to complete the code, of course, and compare the simulation with the data. Okay, now we have 10 minutes to go and uh, we can uh, continue from here. So now we know that the code is computing ER. Let's try to move forward. And what we do is, first of all, we need to, comp to split ER into components through alpha. So let's compute uh, Q, let's call it 
quicker or let me u quicker to use the same name that is used in the code that is on the website is equal to alpha times e r i and then we have u slow which is equal to 1 minus alpha times e r i Now let's put a comment and we apply here the single linear reservoir. <coughs> now we need to route uh, u quick, uh, u u slow through the single linear reservoir. It's just a matter of convention of agreeing what of the two components we route through the single reservoir and uh, the cascade of three reservoirs. And uh, let's start with the single reservoir and let's assume that it's the U slow that we want to run through it. I am now writing uh, two relationships uh, to apply the linear reservoir. You don't know this relationship, let's write them and then let's discuss them a little bit. So, W slow, which is the volume that is contained at each time step in the single linear reservoir, we can write it in this way, open parenthesis, 1 minus K slow, and let me make clear that according to this formalism, according to the shape of this relationship that I am writing, K is the inverse of the time constant that we assumed, we considered in the lectures. So the, the, the unit of my K is low, it's 1 over time it's just a matter of an agreement that we should take. If you want to stick on the definition of the constant of the linear reservoir in time terms, you need to take the inverse of this. Okay, so let's assume that, because it's easier to write, let's assume that k is low at the unit of 1 over time, so it's the inverse of the constant that, again, we discussed during the lectures. So 1 minus k slow times w slow. What is this? So I am computing the water content in the reservoir at time t. And this is equal to, according to this, Formalism, it's 1 minus k, 1 minus k, wt. So basically, let's stop here and then I need to move forward by adding the input to the reservoir. But if I stop here, I can write this relationship in this form wt minus k wt. And what is this? It's the content of the reservoir minus the outflow. Because you may remember that we defined the outflow, Qt, as Wt divided by K prime. But then we are assuming now that K is equal to 1 divided by K prime. So basically what we are obtaining so far is that the content at the current time is equal to the content itself minus the outflow Q, which is indeed what we expect. And then this means that now we have to add the input. And 
then let's complete it. We need to write 1 plus, again, 1 minus k is low, times u slow. So u slow is the input. But be careful. We can't write the we can't add the whole input because, because while the input is coming in, it is originating a corresponding outflow. And therefore, this is why the input, which is the gross input, which is u slow, is computed by 1 minus k again. Because part of the input remains a storage, part of the input, while it comes in, it goes out through the outflow. So this is uh, the storage, and then we need to compute Q's law, which is the output. And the output uh, can be computed in this way. K is low divided by 1 minus K is low. times W slow. And you may say, why don't you compute the output Q slow by, by just multiplying the storage W slow times K? No, because while the output is going out, storage is decreasing. So I need to take into account, I can't just compute K slow times W slow. I need to take into account that something is going out. During the time step. Good. So, we got the routing from the single linear reservoir. And uh, we are getting Q slow. Now, if you give me a, give me a couple of minutes, now we can write the cascade of uh, three reservoirs. And uh, we can write it in this way. Four. J in one, two, three, three reservoirs, curly bracket, W quick J, But we are introducing a vector here, W quick, so we need to define it. Let's uh, don't forget to define it. W quick J is equal to, again, the same relationship we computed above for the storage in the single reservoir, the quick times W quick J plus one minus Q quick times U quick since that everything is closed in the parentheses and then Q quick is equal to Q quick divided by 1 minus Q quick 
times W weak J and then we can write U quick is equal to U quick because we the output from the previous reservoir is the input for the next one and then we are done because I can close the curly bracket should work the only thing that we don't have to forget is to define the vector W quick I'm looking at the program yeah so let's <coughs> in order not to forget to define it here and uh, what we need to do is to define W quick equal repetition 0, 3 ok this is where we are, basically we computed the Q slow and Q quick and therefore, we just need at this stage to sum them up in order to get the results. So we are almost done. In fact, if you look at the program on my website, you will see that we are almost done. I think we need to stop here because we are running out of time. Don't forget, what I may suggest to you, you can try to complete it. And, uh, and then you can try to run it uh, and because it's on my website there is everything don't forget that in order to get the river flow you just need to sum up q quick and q slow but you also need to multiply the result times a conversion factor because we never discussed so far about units we are using rainfall data which are in millimeters per hour and we want to get the river flow in cubic meters per second so you need to make sure that units are coherent in any case next time, next week we will get some time to conclude it thank you Thank you.